welcome to what technically is the first episode of Brittany Bets with Friends. I'm your host, Brittany McReynolds, and it is week 15 in the NFL. Time flies. This is definitely the time of the year that gets me sad because it means that the football season is coming to an end, and it means that, you know, teams are closer and closer to their seasons being ending. But that also means that the strong teams are going to be showing up and going to the playoffs like the Rams. And I was at the Rams game on Monday when they beat the Cardinals. That is why that's why my voice actually sounds like this. Um, But yeah, Um, without further ado, let's get into week 15 because Christmas is eight days away. And I want you guys to make a little bit of money before before then. So yeah, just recapping a little bit of last week or last night's game, actually, Thursday night game, the Chargers against the Chiefs. That game gave us uh, quite a bit. If you bet on that game, if you played some props, a lot of the things that I would have played came through. I had no action, full disclaimer. I typically don't play Thursday games, um, but I did have my eye on a Travis Kelsey touchdown which obviously did come through in the end people had to sweat that one out and then he scored the game winning touchdown in overtime um I believe the Eckler touchdown came through as well but I mean you gotta I I don't know I'm not actually I'm not sure about that one but you got a fun prop if you played the Justin Herbert rushing touchdown because that one I saw that he ran ran that one in and yeah uh Chargers are a little bit of a disappointment sometimes when it comes to taking them and, you know, against the spread. They they dropped the ball last night. They had that game, I thought, but once the Chiefs tied it up, I knew that it was going to be over. So looking ahead, I'm really excited because not only do we get football game tomorrow on a Saturday, but we get what I would think and hope is a good football game. Um, The AFC is wide open. So I really, really, really expect this game to be close. It's more of a proppy game for me. Although if I did have to take, if I had to choose a side when it comes to the spread, I would take the Patriots. Um, They're nine and four against the spread. And it's just, it's just something about betting against Bill Belichick for me. It never has panned out in my favor. So I would have to take the points. I think it's going to be a really close game, honestly. Um, I think that they're going to both on both teams, they're going to utilize the run. Obviously, they have two of the best backs in the league. Um, Jonathan Taylor on one side, Damian Harris on the other side. So if you are looking at props, I definitely sprinkle some money on either one of them. If you can parlay it, why not? I think that they'll both score. If you want a little bit of pass action, I'd try to um stick with the Colts more I just obviously Mac Jones only threw it three times last week they ran Patriots carried the ball 46 times 46 times so um I don't know either it's going to work out in your favor if you try to take a passing prop uh maybe this is the game that Mac Jones wants to prove to people that he does still throw the ball so maybe but I would lean more towards maybe a Michael Pittman anytime touchdown So, yeah, I am just looking for some really good football on a Saturday tomorrow. For Sunday's slate of games, um, I kind of only like two. I feel like the later that we get in the season, the more tired teams get. You know, we're starting to see who's the real deal, who's sort of fool's gold. Um, And then this current situation that we have this week, we have tons and tons of players on the COVID list. So we have games being rescheduled. We have players out. So that's obviously going to affect the lines. It's always going to affect the play or that's obviously going to affect the play. Um, So just two games that I'm actually looking at. Um, Actually, it's three other games on set on Sunday. So. I was looking at the Cowboys game, and the only reason why is because obviously that offense is just so explosive. They're always going to put up points. The Giants are absolutely deplorable. I was looking at that game because obviously Dallas is an explosive offense. They are always going to score points. Obviously, the Chiefs kind of shut that down that one game. But other than that, they're always putting points on the board. 
Dak has all those weapons. Um, they're playing a deflated Giants team. If Daniel Jones is playing, you know, hopefully he's not seeing stars. And that secondary is just, I mean, they're just down to slim pickings. That, that's what it all comes down to, you know. I really thought that that defense was going to be a lot better than what they are because they've always had the Rams number when they've played us. But obviously the Giants just, they're not going anywhere. They have nothing to play for except trying to beat the Cowboys, whom they obviously hate. But I think that Dallas is just playing way too well. And they're, I believe they're 7-0 and against the, the NFC against the spread this season. That's just, that's too good. Ten and a half may seem like a lot of points, but I think that they're more than capable of covering that. So that is one game that I would put a little asterisk next to. Um, let's see. The second game that I was looking at was the Bengals versus the Broncos. The AFC is wide open, obviously. You know, like literally each division is up for grabs by just one game. Those wild card games, like anyone can get in. So when it's all said and done, I think that all the AFC games, just like Colts, New England tomorrow, just like um, I believe the Titans-Steelers game is going to be close. Bengals, Broncos, that's going to be a close game. Um, Joey B, obviously, just like Justin Herbert, they just went into overtime games and they dropped the ball. But that doesn't really discourage me from – you know, taking the Bengals plus three, I do think that they're actually going to win this game. Um, they just, their defense was playing really, really solid. Um, their front, they got there last week against the Niners. They got to Jimmy G quite a bit of time. So I think that they're more than capable of getting the Teddy. Um, although I know that Denver has a really, really good run game and Melvin Gordon and um, Javante Williams. So they can definitely try to move the ball that way. Um, Denver has a really good defense also. Um, let's think, um, Denver's defense, they held the Chiefs to only 22 points. They absolutely beat the brakes off the Lions, only let them score 10. And then a couple weeks before all that, I think that they play, I think they played the Chargers and they only held them or they only put up 13 against them. So Chiefs, not Chiefs, sorry. So Broncos definitely are going to come out ready to play. Like I said, the AFC is wide open, but I just think that the Bengals are going to regroup. They're going to get it together. Joey Bur Joe Burrow did get sacked quite a bit in the game against the Niners, so hopefully they can clean that up. And if they do, I think that they'll be really successful, not just in the past game, but I think that Mixon will probably get rolling, so that might even be a good anytime touchdown to play. Um, and I'm definitely rolling with the Bengals plus three. All right, guys. So the final game for this week for me, and this one is probably my best bet. So Britt's best bet of the week is going to be call me crazy. I know people are probably thinking it's a trap. Why are you going to lay that many points? It's going to be cold. <laughs> but I like Green Bay minus six and a half. I just think that that's easy money. I think that Green Bay is not going to play with their food. They've been playing way too well. Aaron Rodgers may have that little foot problem, but it didn't look too bad to me when they put all those points up against the Bears. Bears kept it close for a little bit, and then Green Bay just was like, you know what, let's just get this over with. Um, Aaron Rodgers just has way too many weapons. I mean, if you want to go the prop route, you can do a Devontae Adams anytime touchdown. You can do an Aaron Jones anytime touchdown. You can even do an A.J. Dillon anytime touchdown for a little bit more value. Those all have chances. You can even take your chance and sprinkle a little bit on a defensive touchdown, to be honest with you, because I think that Lamar will get picked off if he plays, if he does try to throw it, because let's, let's face it. If you shut down Lamar Jackson, you have shut down the Ravens' entire operation. Um, maybe try to do an over on Lamar's rushing yards if he is playing, but I'd be careful with that because the ankle thing is one of the things that they say that's keeping him or that's limiting him. Um, so I just 
I think that the Packers are just playing way too well. As much as I'd like them to lose as a Rams fan, as a fan in the NFC, as someone who does not want to see anyone have first place in the NFC other than the Rams, I just I have to be a realist, and I just don't see them dropping this game. I don't see them really losing it because – Ravens defense has been coming up a little bit short. They've been playing a little bit disappointing, in my opinion. They only got to Baker one time last week, one time. And when it's all said and done, I just think that Aaron Rodgers is that good. So you may be lucky if it stays at minus six and a half. It might go up to seven, seven and a half. But six and a half is a really good number for me. That's my best bet of the week. Um... I'm not looking at any bowl games, guys. I just kind of want to enjoy college. I'm going to try to study a little bit for next week's slate of games so that I can give you a lot more than three ga- four games this week. And good luck, everybody. If I don't see you guys or talk to you guys before then, go Rams and Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. <laughs>